In the beginning, there was nothing, only darkness. And from that darkness, a light was born. A light so powerful that from it the stars themselves were created. What soon came after were the planets, water, life, and eventually infinite solar systems. We are simply men limited to the thoughts before us. Our mere existence is only a hypothesis. But what if I told you that there was a creator behind all this? That someone or something with a conscious much higher than we could ever conceive nitpicked and crafted every single piece of humanity? What if I told you that this creator is Big Chungus? We begin our journey by visiting one of the most well-respected scholars in the Big Chungus community, a man who has dedicated many decades of his life to the discovery and the origins of mankind. Hello, I'm Dr. Professor Lucas Williams, Chungai expert and enthusiast. I've been studying the Chungai or the Chungus for 13, 16 years now. And look, we can break it down as simple as this. People have this notion or idea of what a God or creator should look like or be. Uh, for example, in India, we have Brahma, who is essentially the creator, Vishnu, the preserver, and Shiva, the destroyer. In Judaism, we have Jehovah. In Christianity, we have the Messiah. So when you challenge people with the idea that there's only one true deity or one creator to rule them all, people don't take kind of this. But you see, the similarities between all these other gods and all these other religions is that none of them have concrete evidence to prove any of them really exist. Whilst on the contrary with Chungus, it's all around us. There's evidence right before our eyes. Chungus, to my knowledge, is one of the oldest belief systems in all humanity. If we look back at the ancient civilizations and ancient tribes, we see him everywhere. In the Mesopotamians, the Egyptians, the Mayans, Aztecs, Incas, you name it. In Southeast Asia, there was Chungus in prayer rituals that were used to heal lymphatic diseases. There is a huge influence of Chungus or Chungai in ancient Chinese medicine. In the tombs of kings of Northern Europe, we see etchings of big Chungus spread throughout the coffins. Whether you know it or not, Chungus has been there all along. Could this be true? Was it only by mere coincidence that Chungus appeared in all these different parts of the world at the same time? Was it only a fluke that so many cultures and civilizations were influenced by his structure? I don't know. Could be. I'm not too sure. But it could be possible. In various ancient cultures, it's said that there will be a time where Chungus will vanish for dozens of dozens of decades. We all know that. And according to ancient texts, it says and it states that he will come back. He will resurrect to guide his people. Just recently, there's been a spike of Chungus content and sightings throughout the media. To some, this is a mockery. To others, it's an awakening. My fellow Americans, tonight I am speaking to you because there is a growing humanitarian and security crisis at our southern border. Every day, Big Chungus. What's happening right now? Big Chungus, I love him. Can I just say, I love him. It's Big Chungus. What is Big Chungus? You are. Chungus is among us! Chungus is among us! 
Chungus is among us. Chungus is among us. Service out here. It's cold outside. A lot of people are actually throwing really negative comments, but we don't care. We're gonna continue to pick it, and we're gonna let the world know that Big Chungus is among us. I want everyone out there, everyone out there, just just look around. Look at the Chungus around us. It's among us. I want you to believe. I want to to heed all blasphemy. I want you to believe. Right here. Savior is the Chungus. So, uh, and these people need to know, you know, Chungus is among us. He's, he's in me? He's in him? He's in you? He's all around. Chungus is among us. Chungus is among us. Chungus Hello. is among us. I'm a Thais Bay. And I'm the president Chungus of the Big Chungus Collective. Our group's main purpose is to spread the word of Big Chungus throughout the universe. Personally, I feel like people have been ignorant to the teachings of Big Chungus. And we've been getting a lot of attention in the news, social media, saying that we're cool and yada yada yada, but it's gonna be further from the truth. And when the people came for Big Chungus, he fled. He left persecution into the mountain to one day return to a greater people, a better time. Chungus will return. Big Chungus cleanses his man. Big Chungus. We don't do any cold stuff. Our members only meet up when we have the time to spread the word of Big Chungus, trying to recruit new members, and if someone doesn't necessarily conform to our ideology, you know, we, we shun them. In order to fully understand the teachings of Chungus, we must break down the word Chungus itself. Essentially, Chungus breaks down into two major syllables, Chun and Gus. The first half of the word, which is pronounced Chun, directly translates into spring in Chinese. As we all know, spring is a time of year where life is formed. Furthermore, when looking into the second half of the word, which is pronounced Gus, you'll notice it begins with a letter that's prevalent in the English language. The letter is G. Now you may be asking yourself, what other word starts with the letter G? The word is God. When we combine these two syllables, what we're forming is a verbal expression to describe the God of life. Chungus is love. Chungus is life. Chungus is everything. To some, he's a female. Uh, to others, his life form is a male. In all honesty, if you ask me, I'm a doctor professor, for crying out loud. He transcends all 76 genders. Is Chungus a sexual being? I don't know. But to the ancient Mesopotamians, he, she was. All I can leave you with is a seed of thought and hope that a tree of knowledge sprouts from that seed. Whether you believe or not is entirely up to you, but I know one thing's for damn sure, Big Chungus is among us.